Hello everyone and welcome to what's a really nice, easy, simple fold that adds plenty of interest. This is the pop-up fold-out card. So it pops up as you fold it out and you've got that lovely little decoration there. So you may have seen this one I've already shared with you. It's using the Invention Kit by Knitwit Collections. And it's a very different, fun one. Loving the colours. They're so bright and fun. Or literally fun. So there we are, just collaged up. So this was all different elements that I've just put together on my computer. Same with the main topper. But as always with my cards, you could use any papers, any kits or toppers you may already have. And I said, this one's very simple. Just need one piece of cardstock. And I've already prepared, because I'd already had all the measurements for this one, that's all I had to do was change it up, just change the background and build up my new one. So I've used the, um, the gnomes, the newest one with the bees and the honey theme. So this is my template which will help me along my way. So let's start with a trimmer. Now, if you haven't got a trimmer, you still can make this. And I'm gonna show how I use it because I've got my measurements on this, but I'll also show you an easier way as well. So first off, let's cut our piece of cardstock at seven by 11. So seven inches tall. Oh yeah, so this does fit into a five by seven envelope. I so said, this isn't a new concept. This is a really old design, but I've just altered it so that if a five by seven, because it's quite a newish um, size in the card making. Okay, so now this is how my card base is gonna be. And turn it so the thin piece is in the top. So I'm actually going to do my cuts first. Now, the easier way, you would do this last. So I'm just going to line that up. So my cutter is at um, two and a, sorry, one and a half. So it's one and a half inches down. I'm going to start my cutter at two and a half. And I'm going to stop at five and a half. So from two and a half to five and a half. And then I'm going to slide it down and I'm going to repeat it one and a half inches from the bottom. So from two and a half to five and a half. So I've done my two cuts ready now. Now, because I've done my cuts ahead of time, it's gonna be easier for me now to do my scoring. But on my original one, you'll see my score line comes all the way down. I literally scored all four of my lines all the way down. And you can do that because your topper will strengthen that fold. But I know some people don't like doing that. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to do it without those bits. Okay, but if, if you find that tricky, just do your, these score lines all the way down. Still the same measurements. So we're gonna start off at two and a half. And for my version, I'm just gonna stop where my cut line begins. If you're doing the easier version, just goes all the way down. Then I'm gonna to go to four. Now I'm holding my cut lines in place. And I don't want them to move because this time I'm gonna go over them all the way down. So whichever method you're doing, you're gonna go all the way down on the four inch. Then I'm gonna to go to five and a half and I'm gonna stop at my first score line. Again, if you're doing the simple one, just go all the way down. And then my final one is seven inches all the way down. Now I'm just gonna 
flip it over and I'm going to repeat my two and a half. Stop at the cut line and my five and a half. I stop at the cut line. If you've done the simple version, you do not need to do that bit. So that's all my scoring done. I'll just get my score lines going the same way. I'm just going to retrace those. So that now is my card base done. I know you can probably not see much of it because of the black cardstock, but we're gonna start off folding this complete line, which seems on its own here, and we're gonna fold it back. Oh, if you are doing the simple one, you've done your score lines, now you just need to put in a trimmer and cut those two. If you have got a trimmer like me and you're using a blade, just draw, come down this line, put a pencil mark there and there, just one and a half inches down and one and a half inches in from each side and join them. Right, so we've folded that first one back. Now the next bit, we've only got these two score lines. So what I'm gonna do is skip those and come to this full line here. I'm gonna fold that back. So now I've got my Z fold. So what I want to do now is these shorter, uh, smaller bits here, I'm just going to reverse them and poke them down and on this one here. And then when, then when I bring it together, they will fall down like so. I'm just going to get my Teflon tool in there and score them all down. So you can see a really nice, easy base. You can see the pop out element there. It looks like it just pops out, but then still folds down flat. And that's all I did then was, I looked at each section and just make each bit smaller a quarter of an inch smaller. So this was two and a half across and one and a half up. So I imagine that this bit here was a full four by four square. So it was then two and a quarter across by one and a quarter. And you'll see that here. Then this was four by four. So I've gone down to three and three quarters. So whilst I'm actually going through, why not? Cut them out. So again, all these images then, I've just, in Microsoft Publisher, just layered things up. So the yellow is one of the solids. And then I've layered the white solid on top and just shrunk it down. So there's nothing too complicated there because the knitwear papers actually come in squares. So this now was my two and a quarter by one and a quarter. Again, if you're using your patterned papers, or even this kit, you could just print off a full sheet of the plain paper and just trim these down. I just find it easier to do everything in one go on screen. Doesn't mean you can't do it, they use these kits in the old fashioned way of just printing out full sheets and toppers and assembling them together. This way it's just a little bit flatter. Okay, so I needed two of them, one for the top and one for the bottom. So then we had six little squares, which were one and a half by one and a half. So my patterned paper is one and a quarter by one and a quarter. So I've got six of these. So I've chosen four of the gnomes. Well, and this one, the honey, has even overlapped with me. So I'm just going to cut out his honey. There we go. So 
So it's at one and a quarter by one and a quarter. Now I have put little images on top of mine, just plain cut, uh, patterned paper would work too. But there were so many of those little gnomes I liked that I just went for a different one in each square. My cutting is way off here tonight. So here we go. Oh, and the honeys, honey pots. And there were so many other images I could have used here, just like the bees would have worked. So we've got six of these to cover there. That's not the order I'll be putting them in. We do need the honey pot in there. There we go. Then this bit here was four by three. And this is where, to me, is where my sentiment's gonna go and where I would sign the card. So I've just gone for a nice open Plain background with just the BU sentiment there. Still plenty of room to write the card. There we go. And the final one is a four by seven. So yes, yeah, so it's not a five by seven. When I tried the, originally I did try making it with a five by seven back. But then my card stock wasn't long enough to get it from the A4 card. So that's why I came up with this for where I could extend the front a bit more as well. It did take quite a few um, different attempts to actually get all, uh, all the panels looking a tidy proportion. So yes, my coloring uh, my cutting is a bit off tonight, so I'm going to use some black soot distress ink around all my bits. It's also covering the white core, but covering my <laughs> appalling cutting tonight. So you can see that white edge there, and now it's gone. Big one. Usually I take a bit of time doing this, but it's not the most interesting part of the video, is it? But it does just finish everything off nicely. Just a few more pieces. with this little honey pot and so yeah you could have used these flowers on those bit if you want a more feminine look so despite this being a collection based on the gnomes and the bees there's still plenty of florals and things inside that you can use it for many different occasions and I think with fun folds like this I think they do lend themselves to um, your more masculine cards as well and your fun cards. Just because the pop up element just adds a bit of intrigue. I think us guys do then look at, oh, how did, how was that done? So there we go. Everything now is inked. Let's bring in my pop out fun fold. Let's start with the easy one, which is this back bit. And I'm just using my Cosmic Shimmer Dries Clear. And then I'm just leaving it with a little black border because we made all our panels just that tiny bit less than the piece it's sticking onto. So then this is the main one. Now, when I'm sticking this one, I'm using this left bit because it sort of disappears here. 
So I'm just lining it up with the left hand side and those three pieces. There we go. Uh, so let's put that central panel in as well. And then this is the opposite way around. I'm going to be lining it up on the left hand side with those three bits. There we go. That's a bit too much glue there, but it does dry clear. And let's close it up and we put our bees in. Oh, we have a way. Yeah, let's go that way around. Let's have him on the bottom. So I'm using the left hand side guide and then lining it up on those three sides. And let's do the same with the other piece. And then I'm going to, I'm going to put the honey pots in the middle. So let's line that one up. And this one. Ooh, dropped it. I nearly stuck it on sideways then. And then this guy's the one with that little extra bit, so I think I'll put him up there. No, he's looking off to the left, so let's put him down here. And let's put this one down here. Said so these are all now just one and a quarter inch squares. And the last one. There she goes. And there is my pop out card. It does not pop up, but pops out. So let's just press it on down. And there we go. So nothing too tricky there. And definitely a versatile shape for you. I said this one I've done many years ago, just adapted the measurements for five by seven cards. So I'll link below as well to the Nitwit collections that I've used, the known one and the invention, because I think they both look so fab. And two totally different looks, but the same shape. So thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed and you're going to have a go, please, please, please have a look in the comments below and I'll share a link to my Facebook group so you can show uh, photos of yours. And if you haven't done so already and you have enjoyed and want to see my uh, future tutorials and to not miss out, please hit that subscribe button. And again, in the comments below, write any thoughts you have. Which of these cards... Did you prefer? Do you prefer the no or the inventions? Do you prefer the more subtle colours or the bolder, brighter ones? So thanks for watching and I'll see you all again soon.